So consider this a little behind the scenes bonus video, I guess, for those of you actually interested in what's going on in the background here and how the mod is sort of uh, taken its own life, I guess, from, from things you guys have suggested in the comments section. So I'll talk you through the first little bits that I actually made, obviously, a few episodes ago for the original Angel Visit or whatever else here. So I also treat this, I guess, as a little bit of an event tutorial, but it, it's just me kind of showing what's going on behind the scenes here and how everything, how everything works and, and what you guys can expect if you want to download this whenever I, I would get around to actually polishing it up and making sure it's a finished product. So this event here, Angel's One, is the Angelic Visit. This is the original one where Brother Lubberget came to our court and gave us the Angelic Blood. I'm actually going to keep this in the game. Now, for the for the campaign, I kept it as one month mean time to happen because obviously I didn't want to be waiting 50 years in a video for this event to fire. Otherwise, we'd have been wiped out. Now, in the actual mod, I believe it's something like 50 years it can happen because it's quite a powerful event. Obviously, if you're playing with just Mythos 2, you're not going to be beset on, on God's Rain besides. I wanted it to be rare. Not as rare as the Immortal event, which it wouldn't be. It's every 50 years. So, in theory, if you're a virtuous character, you could get this event with every character you play as, right? So... It, it is 50 years in the basement, but like I said, just for videos, just for, like, directing purposes. I said so it only took a month to fire for us. Is that is that elite hacking? Yes, it is. Thank you for asking. So, we'll talk about sort of this first section here. So, f just to break down how events work for those of you who are interested in this, but don't really know what's going on. So, the ID is just how you refer to an event. If you want to link events together, you need to know the ID. So, in this case, the ID is angels.1 because the namespace of the file is angels. So, everything will be angels.something. It could be angels.10, it could be angels.69, it could be angels.420, uh, Yon Haku Niju, or whatever else you want. It doesn't matter. As long as the namespace is angels, it makes it easier to link lots of events together rather than having loads of separate events, essentially. It's just, just your standard CK2 stuff. Title is for narrative events. There are two different types of events, really. There are character events, narrative events. There are also things like hidden events as well, but we won't talk about that because I don't really use any in this uh, in, in this setup here. So, narrative events are your big sort of narrative information dumps. You know, the big ones where you get the big scroll opening, sort of like Matters of Life and Death with a big picture at the top, big drop cap title, things like that. So, you will actually have to define that title separately. So, this one, um, event angel.1. I actually don't remember what this event was called. Let me just open up the other folder here. I'll open up the uh, localization so you can see how all this links together too for those of you who are interested in that type of thing. Um, so, somewhere in here, there we go. So, you can see event angel.1 links to this, which is called Earthly Stigmata. So, when this event opens up, you will get, the, you know, that big fancy looking E, and then it will say Earthly Stigmata along the top as a title. Description, event angel info.1, which is over here. So, after many devastating setbacks, blah, 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 blah. Finally, there you go. Then and you've got your, your Dagoth wave reference there. What a grand and intoxicating instance for the response. Response is what you say to the event when it happens. So, this is the, the option that you would physically click on, so you might get a choice between, say, debating the mints or, you know, uh, going for the prestige instead, which is what no one ever does, let's be honest here. So what will happen is if, for us, for the player, for, for me as somebody looking to make videos, the trigger is very simple. You need to not have been visited by an angel, right? A global flag, a flag in game development is essentially a marker of something that has happened, right? So... In this case, there needs to not be... So there are character flags, which are flags that only affect character to character, because obviously you don't want to set a global flag for debasing the mints, otherwise no one else on planet Earth can debase the mints. For Angelic Visit, though, it was only us that was ever going to be visited by the angel, because I've, I've now changed the system of how this works, but at the time I thought it would only really affect us. I made it possible for the AI to also be visited by the angels in the actual mod, but we'll, we'll talk about that later on as well. Um... So there needs to not have been an angelic visit happened for us before. We have to be above the age of 16. I made it very lapsed for me as a video maker because obviously I didn't want to be waiting, you know, 50 to 100 years. You know how CK2's RNG works. You could be waiting five minutes to get an immortality event or you might never see it as some people have told me. So I didn't want to be waiting too long. So I set the trigger to that. When these are all true, when these are correct, you move on to uh, how long it actually takes for this event to fire. Now, certain events have the flag is triggered only, which means they can only be fired by, say, clicking an option in the decision menu, targeting an NPC, for example, sending assassins after them. You can only trigger it via doing that. You don't want that to happen randomly. This is for random events mean time to happen, and that's the mean amount of time for the event to fire. So in this case, it's one month. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to take one month to fire. It could take five days. It could take two months. It's, it's mean. You, you know what that is. It's, it's math. Quick math. So then this is where the bulk of the event happens. Now, there are two ways to do this. You can either have it happen immediately, which means it will happen in the background as the player is reading the event, or you can have it happen when they click the option. Now, I personally like using option because when you do it this way, a little picture of, you know, say like a, in, in this case, this is when Brother Lab I get comes to our court. 
when you set it as the option, a little portrait of Brother Labaget will appear in the in the option slot, you know, and as you hover over it, it'll show the tooltip saying, you know, a courtier named Brother Labaget arrives in your court. If you set it to a media, so it happens in the background the second the event fires, you won't get told that. He'll just be in your court and you'll just be like, oh, there's an angel here, rather than, you know, physically being able to see that, that, that little bit of feedback there. So name Angelic Info response again correlates to whatever you've set up in your localization. So we've got that one going for us. Setting a global flag angelic visit, like I said, this prevents this event happening over and over and over. So that event is now cannot happen again once it's happened once. And we've only got one option for this. You can add up to four options, or you could say add an option that takes you to more options. But you can only have a maximum of four. We've only got one in this one because we didn't, you know, I didn't want the player to be, and I certainly wasn't in the video going to say, no, you know what, we don't want a fucking angel in our court. I obviously wasn't going to say that. So it adds the angelic visit, and then we're going to create a new character. We're going to say no random traits, otherwise they do spawn in with just whatever the game throws at them here. Determined by in traits files. Uh, let's see if we've got any here. Probably not, because these are all the mythos traits going on. Um, no, I don't think we can. So there's a chance for traits to appear just randomly in the world. You know, like you get characters that appear genius or strong, or you might have a kid that's born with tall that, that neither of the parents have. That is determined by a little, uh, like, um, random chance in the traits file. We don't want that to happen. We don't want our angel spawning as a wicked, cruel impaler or whatever. Named Arts Angel Lord, yeah. Is he historical? Yes. That means that you can predefine character traits in the history files, in the CK2 history files, which is an sep entirely separate area of, of modding. You can define it. I want him to be historical just so that we can refer back to him. It allows you to do fancy things, but I won't talk about that too much. Dynasty is, that is House Carlin, because Archangel will get in the playthrough we did. For those of you who don't know, this is a reference back to a previous character. In a Catholic Carlin playthrough, we had um, the extremely pious brother Labaguette, who was the most Christian man who ever lived. Maybe almost as much as extremely antecedent, um, or antecedent extremely, sorry. Maybe as much as him, but of course, unfortunately, he didn't become sainted, so we went on a bit of a vengeful campaign against the Catholic Church. We set up our own church with blackjack and hookers. Historical, yes, dynasty, as we've talked about. Religion is, is fairly obvious, and, and culture is fairly obvious. Female, fairly obvious. We didn't want him to be female, because, of course, the character wasn't female. Attributes are, of course, your stats there, so martial 10, plus 10, stewardship 10. You've got to remember, mind, this is all within the create character bracket, so everything within this is what this character is going to spawn with. So he's also got 50 health, minus 500 fertility, because we don't want loads of little fucking angels running around, because that'd be kind of weird. Uh, he is a brilliant strategist. He has powerful, he's zealous, immortal, archangel, holy warrior, blah, 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 blah. blah. You sort of see how this is going. That's brawny, by the way, robust. It's just called brawny. And similarly, that's attractive, just called fair for whatever reason. Then after that, you can you can only define a certain amount of things on the character creation. After that, we're targeting the new character, which in this case is Archangel Labaget. We're setting the character flag as Labaget. Now, that allows us in eventing to refer to specific things. You can also do something like um, set event target and then do something along the lines of, uh, you know, brother Labaget. Anyway, you can kind of get what I'm getting at there. You can, you can do this in multiple other ways, but that's kind of the easiest one for us. We want this to be set as brother Labaget. So for events... We can say any courtier who has the character flag, blah, blah, get, show him in this event. You know, put his portrait up on the screen. So that way, it, you know, makes it just feel more like a, more like he's actually having some sort of interaction with the gameplay. Similarly, if you, and, and this is something you don't have to do, but otherwise it can cause some issues with the game. If you have Holy Fury, give him a bloodline as well. That kind of makes sense, right? Because if you don't have Holy Fury, you can't have bloodlines. So if the if the player has that, then you can give them the angelic bloodline. Otherwise, if you don't add that and try and create a bloodline, nothing will happen. So you might as well just set it up. That way, it's not trying to run code that it can't run, right? After that's all done, after you click that option, angels.2 will fire. Now, that's going to happen straight away. Like I said, this is an is triggered only event, which means it can only be, it can only happen after you press this option. And it will happen when you press this option. So that way, it stops it just firing in the background. What this does here is, um, I forget what this actually did, right? Custom tooltip blessing unlocked. Well, we can actually check the custom tooltip there. So we are looking for blessing unlocked. You may undertake the trial of the spirit from the great angel, but love again. Right, so this was him telling us like, oh, I am an angel. I'm here to give you angel powers or whatever else. Gives us a trait angelic blood. So this is for the player now. When we click this, and it can't happen for the AI, by the way. When we click this, angelic input response to custom tooltip blessing unlocked so that will just tell us hey you can now take as you hover over the option it'll say you know a new decision been a lot to undertake the trial it will give us the angelic blood and it'll also create a bloodline bloodline angelic and the patrilineal inheritance so it's given us the same bloodline that he has but our own unique one you know it's creating a fresh bloodline rather than adding us to a pre-existing one because that's kind of a pain in the ass not that we'd want to do that anyway we want to obviously our own angelic blood on there Type just means what type of bloodline is it. It doesn't mean that that's going to be the same bloodline as this character, which is a mistake I've seen and actually some mods people have made. 
It doesn't mean that, you know, we are going to be added to that same type. You define bloodline separately, right? So, for example, here is the angelic bloodline I've defined. We could do a new one. We could do, like, bloodline uh, fallen angel, for example. Um, if I can spell, sorry, my microphone cable is over my keyboard, so don't expect particularly good typing here. Bloodline Fallen Angel might give, you know, minus one diplomacy, might give, uh, plus two martial, might give five health, might give same religion opinion, I don't know, zealot opinion, minus 15, some shit like that, right? Cynical opinion, doesn't really matter, Catholic opinion, definitely like minus 50 if you're a Fallen Angel. Cool, that's that. What will that would do, and we'll also set, uh, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll with this, we're gonna make the Fallen Angel bloodline entirely, because then I can give it to Satan during the series, and I can be like, hey, that's for you behind the scenes boys who watch this video, huh? Bloodline Fallen Angel, there you go, and if you're a Catholic, you can have that bloodline, I should probably also set it to, what is it, religion? I actually don't know what the mythos religion is, I think it's just Luciferian? I might be wrong on that, but anyway, we'll, we'll say that it's active if you have either Catholicism, in fact, you might not have to do that. I was going to say or, as in Catholic or Luciferian, but I assume the game is smart enough to know that. In fact, never assume anything with CK2. It's fucking stupid sometimes. Um, we'll chuck in an or statement there very briefly just to separate those out and make sure it is running as intended. Cool. So there's our new bloodline, by the way, and that's how you define it. Now, that doesn't mean that if we give this to two separate characters, they're going to be part of the same bloodline. It will give them their own. So it'll be Fallen Angel Bloodline of Lucifer, Fallen Angel Bloodline of Steve, Fallen Angel Bloodline of, I don't know, Alfred of Wessex. They'll be separate. That's the point I was making. And that was a very long and protracted point, but I've also made a fresh bloodline there, so you're welcome. So, what happened after that then? So, narrative event angels.2. So, that, there's that one. Yeah, we saw the bloodline thing. Then after this, I assume was fired by the options. So, this is angels.3. And if we go into the localization again, let's get rid of that one now, because we're not going to... Oh, wait. No, I actually need that. Bring that back. Angels.3, trial of the sacred heart. So, this is the one where we were actually firing the event to... Uh, to undertake Brother Lubber gets trial. I need to be careful I'm not pressing the delete key and stuff in my recording as well, because that would suck. So, again, this picture is just the picture that shows up at the top. It's a narrative event. Border changes the actual colour of the outline of the box. It sounds like a, a, a weird thing to do. If you've got martial events, the outline will be red, right? If you've got diplomacy events, the outline will be blue. If you've got a learning event in this situation, it's narrative frame underscore religion that makes it white to correlate to the learning stat. AI is no, it's triggered only yes. And then you've only got one option. I believe this one here. Uh, so this is an event with two options here. Option A means you carry on with it. And then the next event will fire. Option B means that the angel will... I think that was the one where I said, Hey, I'm not ready for this right now. Let me come back later. Um, yeah, I'm, I need more time there. So you can sort of see the actual passable prose text. An Angelic info response 3B will say, I'm not ready. Let me come back later or whatever. So this one is where things get a little more complicated. But it's still very, very easy, right? What happens here? Angel trials begin. You get a little title saying, you know, angelic trials, blah, 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 blah. Where did I put my phone? I was expecting a phone call, so let me just pr quickly pick that up. Oh, speaking of which, I'm getting a phone call right now. God damn it. Now I have to edit a goddamn behind the scenes video. I can't. Just people. Okay, so with this one, like I said, a little bit more complicated. This is the one whereby it determines whether or not you pass the angel trials. So with this one, we've got the option. When you click this, a random list is. So, so this is. How do I would, how would I describe it? This is essentially a tombola, right? You've got a random chance for a certain thing to happen as you click on this. So with this, we've got a random list generated of all the possible things that affect one of the options. So at the top here, 30% is the base chance you've got for, if we follow this bracket as well, and again, with, with Notepad++, you just simply click the black bracket. It will show you what it's connected to. So at the bottom here, you've got a 30% chance of narrative event number five firing, which means, it, which is a success. That means you pass the trial, or you've got a 70% chance, base chance, by the way, of the failure happening. So there you go, tooltip six is failure. Now, depending on what traits you've got, that modifier is increased and altered. So if you have the trait zealous, you get a 1.2%, or uh, sorry, I should say, uh, like 120%, so that's going to be like 36% chance rather than a 30% chance. If you've got patient, that will be a 33% chance rather than a 30% chance, etc. Because it's 1.1, it's just a factor. You guys know how math works, I don't need to explain that. But these are all compounded, right? So if you have zealous and patient and diligent and kind and just, you're looking at like a 40-50% chance. Similarly, I, now I believe the way it works is it adds them together. It's not multiplicative, so if you get like... Um, you know, if, if you've got, like, already fulfilled Zealous and get that up to 36, and then you've also got Patient, well, obviously, you know, 1% of, of 36 is a lot is, is 3.6, so you're going up a much, much higher amount rather than, well, not a much, much higher amount, but it's still a significant amount. Anyway, I'm, 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 I digress. Not important. It is additive rather than multiplicative. 
So if we come down here, when all of those come together, oh, by the way, if you're a cat, I, I forgot I added that. That was an Easter egg I was hoping someone would find. I've just fucking spoiled it. Now, if you're a cat, you get a 10 times chance of becoming an angel. Similarly, Crusader King, Crusader Ki King, Crusader Queen, sorry, should get bonuses to that as well. If you're a nun, if you're a monk, if you've pledged your life to the Lord, you should get bonuses on being, uh, uh, you know, becoming an angel. Baptized by a bishop, baptized by a pope. If you have some sort of learning education, so mastermind theologian, scholarly theologian, martial coach, attached priest, you get bonuses as well. If you're a theologian, pilgrim, you, you see what I'm getting at here. Similarly, the opposite is true of this one. 70% chance, but if you're possessed, that 70% chance of failure has a factor of five increase. Which basically means it's guaranteed failure, right? Except for all of these adding onto it. But if you're possessed and like a Crusader King, then things are going to start to... It's, it's about finding the right balance. Clearly, you're not going to be able to sit here and use your big old mental maths brain to work everything out like I did. You would have to sort of experiment with it and open up the game multiple times and sort of see if it works and uh, and, and run a lot of tests and make sure you've got the right balance. I feel like the balance I got in this was, was quite well. You might remember we actually failed a, uh, failed a couple of times, which is exactly what you'd expect. Even with all of those traits... It's still a 70-30, which is ideally where I want to be, but I do want it to, if you want to increase your chance, you should give the player that opportunity. That's just good game design, right? If someone spent a load of time getting all these traits, doing all the virtues, de spending their whole life in the Benedictine Order, they should be allowed to become an angel a bit easier, at least in my opinion. Then you've got success. If you succeed, very straightforward event here. You've got all your ran random garbage just making, this is how the event looks. Then the actual code that's been executed, you're just getting angelic blessing. That's it. Similarly, failure. Again, another random list. You've got a 50-50 of receiving... You've, well, okay. So you've got a random list. 50% chance you will receive either, because both are a 50% chance, 50% of the time you'll receive either lunatic or possessed. Then with the rest of it. So, okay. No, I've, I've, I've overcomplicated things here. So actually, these are factors. They're not... They're, it's, not a dead, it's not an exact 50-50 unless you've only got two things with the same weighting. That's, that just makes sense. However... This is actually closer to a 1 in 6, right? So we've got 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 150. If you add those together and then divide it, then you can work out the actual percentage chance. We're not going to do that. But this one, for example, is a 50, 50 becoming possessed or lunatic. The chance of getting that is actually closer to like 1 in 12 because of all of this garbage. Or like 1 in, one in 8, something like that. I'm not doing the maths off the top of my head. But it is closer to 1 in 8 of either getting one of those two. Then you've got a chance, the equal chance of becoming possessed and lunatic because you have of becoming wounded or ambitious or having a headache or becoming cynical or whatever else because you failed the event. <coughs> okay, this is what I've made this morning. Uh, and this is another, this is another roughly 300 lines of code or, or 200, 300 lines of code here. So what this is, is a new angelic system. Right now, if the player gets his angelic blessing, there is no way to A, lose the angelic blessing, which doesn't make sense if you're a particularly, you know, sinful man. If you become a cruel, impaler, lustful, greedy man, there's no way to actually lose that trait. Similarly, there's no way to upgrade that trait. So if you dedicate your whole life to the Lord, if you've got all six virtues, whatever else, you should be able to become an archangel, at least in my opinion. That would give us a nice little bonus as well to our character. So it encourages certain gameplay styles. And again, I'm all about, I'm all about that. I like giving the player choices. I like giving them rewards for dedicating their entire time to certain traits. Sorry, I've got the flu again pretty bad, so I'm like struggling to fucking breathe here while, while talking about this. So the first one here, as you can see, angelic upgrade slash downgrade system. This one is upgrading angelic blood to angelic blessing. So the way this works, and because it's not set to just players only, this will also affect the AI. So if you have children, which we've had in the campaign, with angelic blood, which we've had in the campaign, and they fulfill these, they can also get angelic blessing. Similarly, if there are AI, we'll go to it onto just a later one, we'll come back to this in a second. If you have AI that, for example, have angelic blessing, they can become Archangel if they fulfill the right modifiers. Let's talk about those modifiers then. So the trigger for this one is you have to have all of the following must be true. That's what and does. It means that everything has to, everything has to come back true. So for example, to become, to go from angelic blood to angelic blessing, you have to not have the trait angelic blessing. You also not have to have the trait Archangel, because obviously we don't want this event firing for Archangels, who are already long past that. Similarly, we don't want it for, for firing for those with the Angelic Blessing, seeing as this is an event to give them the Angelic Blessing. If you've got Angel Blood, and, bear in mind, everything's within the sand bracket, if you have Angel Blood, and any of the following, so or is if any of these are true, Virtue is 3, 4, 5, or 6, so if you have 3 Virtues, 4 Virtue, 5 Virtue, 6 Virtues, any amount, then you go from being Angel Blood up to, it takes one month to happen, uh, you could set it to fire immediately, but that does generally slow the game down a little bit. Meantime to happen, one month, you will get yourself the Angelic Blessing upgraded from the Angel Blood. Now, that, again, this event now can't fire because you have that. That way, you're not going to be constantly bombarded by the same event over and over and over. 
Then we've got Angelic Blessing to Archangel, spelt very well there. Not that it matters, that's all. Uh, that's, by the way, hashes are commented out stuff. It's just little notes for yourself, essentially. What we've got here is uh, a trigger, again. You have to have all of these be true. You have to not be an Archangel already, otherwise it would kind of defeat the point. You have to have, because it's and, you have to have the trait Angelic Blood and the trait Angelic Blessing, and you have to be Virtuous 7. If all of those are true, and I might even set like a little piety, if you have like 2,500 piety or something like that, it's very easy to do. You just simply do piety equals 2,500. That way, because CK2 doesn't follow sort of standard PC coding, if you ever use C++ or C++, what you would normally do is if you want it to be exactly 2,500, you do that. If you want it to be greater than 2,500, obviously, or lesser than, or whatever, whatever modifier you wanted to use, or, or not 2,500, I don't even remember how to do that. Was it that one? I don't remember. It's been a long time since I've done any sort of actual real life coding here. Um, so if your piety, this is automatically equal to or greater than, it's very confusing, I know. If you have 2,500 or higher piety, then this will also fire. I actually kind of like that. I might keep that in because it wouldn't make sense that a character with 10 piety who just happens to be virtuous would become an archangel. They would have to be pretty, I think, renowned for what they're doing. Meantime, it's happened again one month. And at that point you gain archangel. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, well, they've still got the trait angelic blessing. That's not the case. In CK2, you have things called opposites. So, for example, you can't simultaneously be arbitrary and just. You can't simultaneously be lustful and chaste. Similarly, if we go to this one, Angel Blood, the opposite of Angel Blood is... Wait, Angelic Blessing. Sorry, my mistake. The opposite of... Oh, Angelic Blessing should be. Thank God we double-checked this. Archangel. That way, the two can't exist simultaneously. That way, you can't have the Angelic Blessing. You can't be a regular Angel and an Archangel at the same time. We don't technically need to add it to this one now, because it's already on this one, so it'll automatically be the opposite. I'm going to do it anyway, just for posterity's sake. Um, there we go. Right, okay. So, Angelic Blessing and that is now opposites. So, now we don't have to add Remove Trait Archangel. It's just making it slightly quicker. This is a... a we're talking, you know, a hundredth of a millisecond of extra sort of CK2 speed. Uh, in terms of processor time, but that can add up, especially when you've got hundreds of events like Mythos does, like base game CK2 does, especially like things like Geheimnis Nacked. Even tiny little shortcuts like this can help out a little bit. Anyway, add trait Archangel. It's going to remove that old one and give you the fresh one. Now we want to do the opposites. We want them to downgrade. So if you are an Archangel and you don't have all the seven virtues, you should be downgraded just to a regular angel because you're not exactly that paragon of the faith, right? So if in within a month you've lost you know, one of your seven virtues, you get back downgraded to Angelic Blessing. But of course, this can trigger again, because you no longer have the trait Archangel. You can be upgraded again if you get that virtue back. Similarly, Angel down to nothing. If you have Angelic Blessing, you'll lose it, at which point you'll just be remove trait Angelic Blessing. So this one we have to, because obviously Angel Blood is just a thing you're born with. This one will just give you, you'll just have Angel Blood at that stage. Then the opposite can happen. If you have any of the sins and you have Angel Blood, so and trait Angel Blood and any of the sins, in one month's time, you can turn into a very horrible, awful demon man, which is exactly what happened with Satan, and I think might happen with some of our characters when I actually load into the game with all of these changes. So finally, another thing I've added, as suggested by the YouTube comments, so I did this all this morning in about five minutes flat, we've got... So this might not work. So if, you, if, you're, a, if you're a CK2 developer and you're looking through this and you're probably thinking, this is garbage, this isn't going to work. I haven't tested it yet. I, I, like I said, I literally just blitzed out very quickly. Then I thought I'd talk it through, because I think some people are kind of interested in what's going on behind the scenes here. So trigger for this one is, uh, th this is a new event I've added based on a comment I saw yesterday that was, if you have angelic blood, you should get, similar to the Carling event, or the Great Warrior event, if you have that bloodline, angels should turn up in your court, just like Great Warriors would. So, uh, so this one's probably the most complicated out of all of what we've seen so far. This is only playable characters, so only lords, not theocracies, oh, oh sorry, not characters you can't play, so obviously, um, barons, not the Pope, anything like that. Only capable, so characters who are infirm, who are otherwise deposed, can't obviously get this. People who aren't a prisoner, people who have the age of 16, is is some of the, 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 the prerequisites there. So these are actually eliminators, right, rather than triggers. So triggers will look at all of the characters and evaluate whether or not they fulfill it. These will actually remove characters from the pool before we've even looked at the rest of the events. So the many of, I need to put some of these up here. But as many of these as possible as you can fit in, the better. Because it actually speeds the game up a fucking lot if it's not looking at every single character in the game to see if it should have, you know, an angel spawn or something like that. So we've got all of those set up, minimum age of 16. So if you have, any bloodline has the flag bloodline angelic. Now we're setting up a bloodline. You might saw that we did this earlier when I very briefly th threw together that Satan one. We've got bloodline fallen angel. But on the angelic one, we have bloodline angelic. So if any own bloodline has the flag bloodline angelic, and it's active for previous. So this is who the event came from, right? And the character is not the founder. 
of the bloodline. Oh, hang on. This is going to get... Yeah, bloodline is active for Prev. Uh, just be base, bear with me on this one. This is kind of uh, a little bit more complicated. So, scopes in CK2, I always struggle with. That's what these things are. Previous, root, root. There's another one called from. I've done a lot of work with it recently, so I've, I've actually got my head around it a bit more. But these are still somewhat complicated. If it's active for the previous character, and the founder is not the previous character, and you have the religion of the previous character, it's very, like, it doesn't fucking matter. Point is, if you have this angelic blood, I might even remove all of that, just maybe if you've got it. Yeah, I'm going to remove all of that. So, if any own bloodline is angelic bloodline, and it's active for the previous character who this event fired for, which is going to be us, and you don't have four characters, so any courtiers, you don't have four courtiers who have, who are bloodline angelic warriors who have appeared in your court using this event, then it can fire. Seems a little bit confusing, let me break it down here. So, this bit obviously determines whether or not the event can fire for us, and then we need to check that they haven't already got four angelic warriors, which are going to be spawned from this event, as we'll see in a second. Now, what this will do is you get you get your angelic response, whatever, you'll create a character. Now, this one I want to be semi-random, because Blood of the Labaget, we want it to be, you know, awesome and kind of cool and a nice little cameo. This one is different. We want them to have semi-random traits. However, by doing that, they can obviously spawn in, you know, Impaler, Lustful, Wicked, whatever else. They want to be Catholic. Culture, random, doesn't matter. Dynasty, no, because they're, they're angels at the end of the day. They wouldn't have a dynasty. Female, 30. What that means is there's a 30% chance of angels spawn female. I actually couldn't think of any female angels whatsoever, but I also didn't know that there wasn't any. So I just set it lower than half, but still possible, if that makes sense. Age, they spawn at 5,000. They will start with a base 10 in every stat. They have 50 health and minus 500 fertility. Now, what this is going to do, because I want them to be somewhat random, we don't want every single one coming in being called, you know, Angelic Warrior with the identical traits, identical stats. We want them to have some random element to them to make the court feel a bit more dynamic, but also so it's not so um, uncanny valley, I guess is the right word. This character, we're going to random, we're going to randomly generate stats for them, and then we're going to give them manually certain traits that we definitely want them to see, but they'll still have a bunch of random shit too. They're always going to be brilliant strategists, they're always going to be powerful, zealous, immortal archangels, or maybe I should just set that to angelic blood in hindsight, because having lots of archangels around could be fairly strong. Um, so we want angelic blessing, and then we also want to add traits, uh, angel blood, there we go. They're going to come in patient, kind, brawny, temperate, diligent, they're not going to have every sin. The point of me doing that is so that they don't immediately spawn and get downgraded just in case they do spawn with like three or four sins, you know? So I'm manually adding those traits on afterwards, but I still want them to be semi-random. So this, this is uh, a semi-random character, not a truly random character, I guess. They're, of course, a Holy Warrior. They've got the Bloodline Angelic Warrior, and then if you've got Holy Fury again, it will make that Bloodline. That takes... Uh, what did I say? Did I say that's triggered only? Yes. So I'm probably going to say... We should have this be, uh, well, what's the mean time to happen? Did I not actually set it up? Yeah, I, I just set this up as triggered only. Um, I'll change this one so that it is, you know, maybe every year you randomly get an angel fire, something like that. That's not a bad idea. So there we go, just quickly fix that one. So normally this event is supposed to happen from, uh, this, this is basically me copying the pre-existing Holy Fury event. Now what it's supposed to do is, uh, have an event that generates the character that works out all the randomness beforehand. I thought this was a lot easier. Um, so, you know, no offense, Paradox, but my method's better. That's not, that's not true. They're, I understand why they've done their method. They have it basically so that the, the randomness happens, all the calculations happens beforehand, so that's not being shown to characters, except will obviously slow things down a little bit. Anyway, now it's set up, so every 12 months, as long as this is true and you don't have four of those guys, then you will get one to court. So in four years, oh, well, it's, it's, it's on, obviously, mean four years. Most likely going to be more than that. Could be but much less. That's the joy of randomness. You're going to get those four characters. I might even set to, like, maybe two years. So you can do basically like years two, but I always like to use months because it's a bit more fine tunable. Um, you can also do days as well. So we do like, oh, 600 and 365 days, 720 something, 730 days. I don't know what two years is. Get off my back. Right. Months equals, uh, we'll do 24 instead then. So hopefully that's going to be in the game. And then I'm going to start recording an episode soon because this is kind of, I need to check that everything works. I need to set the localization as well because that's something I haven't done yet. Thank you. I apologize if I've been a bit a little out of breath, a little bit coffee, a little bit wheezy because I do have the fucking flu still. So... That's it. I don't know what I have to say. This has been a little bit of a window. It hasn't meant to be a tutorial. I just wanted to show you guys some of the ideas I've got brewing in the background here. Don't know if they'll be ready for today's video because that's got to come out. I've got to start recording that very, very soon. But uh, yeah, that's just a little hint at things. So see you guys all later.